there welcome to my channel my name is Linda I've got a lot of fun Christmas crafts in store for you today but I've got two things to tell you before we get started first I'd like to thank tailored canvases for sponsoring this video we'll get into those details a little bit later and second I have three very sweet friends who are joining in with me today to bring you lots of fun Christmas crafts. Now we have collaborated before and we had such a great time doing it. We decided to come together again for you. I'll bring you that information a little bit later. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Today we're going to be working on some DIY rustic farmhouse Christmas crafts. So let's get started with project number one. For this project, I'm going to be using this tag from Dollar Tree, tag sign, and then one of these little coffee signs from Dollar Tree as well. The little easel on the back, we're going to hook to this so that our little tag can stand up. And then one of these 12-inch slat board wood pieces from Dollar Tree that you can cut in half. So you can make two of these signs if you want. I have one here. It's already been cut from a previous project, so it's ready to go. First thing, obviously, we're going to remove the chalkboard from the front. Now, you could just use this piece if you didn't have any of the slat board wood. You could cut it down to size and cut it in half. With like a craft knife that would work fine so what i'm going to do is off camera i'm going to use my electric sander and kind of take off the paper around the edge and then around that little center circle there and i'm going to replace that center circle with a washer here i'm not sure which one i'm going to use i have two choices i end up using the other one you'll see later and then i'm going to spray paint it uh off camera as well with just some matte black spray paint you can see here i've spray painted the front and back because i will be making several of these for a craft show and whenever i go to do that and i make multiples of things spray painting is easier for me now this little six inch piece i spray painted with chalkboard spray paint because we want to make this a chalkboard right all right, so first thing I'm going to do here is I've got some paper here I've cut to fit just kind of the front little portion here. And this is paper I believe I got in a Christmas paper pack at Hobby Lobby. And I'm going to use some red cardstock as well. And I just traced around that tag. This is going to go down first and then that little bit of designer print will go on top. And when I cut this, I'm going to cut it just oh about an eighth of an inch shorter all the way around so that way all the spray painting we did or if you paint it by hand if you're only making one and not six um, <laughs> um that will be seen around the edges of the paper a little bit so just using my paper trimmer here to cut that off with and then we'll see how it fits here so there you can see just that little bit of border of the paint kind of pops that paper up and then we'll put that other printed paper on top of it just like this now I'm just taking some sandpaper here and I'm just going to distress around the edges a little bit. Not much as I normally do. I just want a little bit and then around our little easel part too so that it looks like it all kind of, you know, fits together. It looks cohesive. Just adds a little bit of distressing to it. Perfect looking great. And then once that set, then set it aside, and then I'm going to take both of my papers here to my sewing machine. Those of you been with me a while, you know what I'm going to say, but you're going to have to bear through it. Um, I just sew on my papers like it is normal fabric. I use a size 10 or 11 needle, depending on manufacturer. If you go to try this and a 10 or 11 is making too big a holes for you, then go down to a 9. You got to play with it a little bit. My machine likes a 10 or 11. I use all cotton thread or all polyester thread because that's what my machine Machine likes but you can use all cotton thread and this is what it looks like it just gives it a nice subtle texture just giving a little bit of warmth country feeling to it using my crocodile here to punch a hole and then I'm taking the open end of my scissor blades and I'm going to scrape along the edges of all my paper to further give it a little bit more of that rustic texture you can see here what it looks like perfectly wonderful you can skip the sewing you can skip the texture along the edges it's just what I like to do I'm going to be using beacon Fabri-Tac glue here I'm going to go ahead and get our main sheet onto our cardstock here perfect just like that and then we're going to go ahead and glue this on to our main tag here you know matching our hole that we punched with the hole in the board there perfect and I'm just going to use my little brayer here to make sure I've got it all smoothed down and this is just a quote I created using my Cricut Design Space program. I will have the fonts listed in the description box for you, those that use Cricut Design Space. Uh, those of you that don't and you don't have an electronic cutting machine, I will have a free printable for you so that you could print this out. You could use your main computer and a program and print it out onto your cardstock and then cut your cardstock out. You could use it, you know, trace it onto your paper and then, you know, use some 
a Sharpie marker or something like that to get it onto your paper. Lots of ways to get this wording onto your paper. But again, a link to the printable will be in the description box for you. I decided to put it on cardstock because I thought um, that helped kind of separate it up. That paper down below has already got words on it and I didn't want it to be too busy. So I thought the cardstock would allow that quote to, you know, shine up a little bit more. And now I'm taking our little chalkboard part of our sign, adding our Beacon Fabri-Tac glue. And we'll go ahead and glue that down up above. Perfect, just like that. This is really easy and it's a really, really cute sign. And then here is my washer I decided to use, a little bit smaller than the one I originally showed you, but we're gonna go ahead and add that on there. Just kind of, you know, gives it a little something, something, I think. And then I've got a little plaid ribbon here from my supply. I've just tied it in a bow and I'm gonna just go ahead and put it right up under that washer there. And then I'm gonna use some of this Crafter Square jute cord here. Again, I've tied it in a bow and I've added some beads from my supply down below in red and black colors so it kind of matched our theme we're doing here. And I'll go ahead and glue that bow on. And then I'll go ahead and tie a knot under each of those uh, last beads down there so that the beads don't fall off. Now, in the final stages, you're going to see a couple of these boards because I wanted to show you, you know, an, uh, another one that I did in a whole different set of colors. So you can just kind of see some fun choices of colors to use and, and see how fun these boards uh, look when they're done. Perfect. Cut off the excess. And I'm at a little rusty bell right in the center of both of those bows there just to finish off that little ensemble. And then I wanna add some thick, thick uh, jute twine up here. This is ones that I get at Walmart. And then I'm gonna add some of this thinner jute twine from Dollar Tree. I don't wanna tie a knot in the twine. I've done this before in my other videos. I just take a long piece and kind of wrap it, a long thin piece and wrap it around both of the thicker pieces near the end. And then I just tie it in a little knot here. Perfect. It just gives a little finishing touch because the, the twine's just too thick when it's like that to, you know, take them both uh, strands together and tie in a knot. So I cut off the excess here. And then what I'll do is just add a little bit of glue right at the top of where I wrapped it. And I've got this great big doll needle and I push that end right into uh, where I wrapped it. And I do that on both sides and then it just kind of finishes it off and gives a little decoration at the end of our twine versus a knot just like that. And then I chose this wood here because it's thick enough that it's a perfect resting place for a piece of chalk. Now we're going to finish off our project here by adding our little easel on the back, just using our Beacon Fabri-Tac glue here to uh, get that glued on. It's going to look wonderful. And once I do that, this project is complete. So here we are. I want to talk to you a little bit about tailored canvases and thank you again for sponsoring this video. I wanted to showcase a new canvas to you. Well, okay, I'm lying. Two canvases. This is one of them that you see here behind me. I love it. I got one for everyday decor and then I couldn't decide and I really love this Christmas one. So I got two of them. So in just a moment, I'm going to, by the magic of editing, appear with the Christmas one behind me. But I just want you to see, even though that this one here is, you know, just kind of a black and white tone, it is so vivid in color. It's just beautiful quality. It's lightweight and it looks fantastic behind me, right? It's a great backdrop. So one moment, please. So as you can see here, this is the other canvas I chose. Let me back up here for just a moment. I just love it. I was able to even personalize it. I love how rustic it looks. 
they're just so beautiful. I didn't personalize it a whole lot. I only wanted to change the date on it. So when you go to order a canvas, there's thousands, thousands of styles to choose from. Okay, there's different size options to choose from, and they are made to be personalized. So their canvases aren't just sitting in a box ready to ship out to you. So what happens is you place your order, you personalize what you want to personalize. I mean, you could change this to, you know, your last name and company if you wanted, however you want to do it. And then once you send your order on in with your personalization on it, they will send you an email. And that email is going to have the proof with your canvas in it and they want you to take a look to make sure that you like how it looks with the personalization you made and if you don't like it and you decide oh, I want to change something at that point you can go in and change it and then they will fix that for you of course once that is done they process your order they get everything ready and they ship it out to you in just a few days I had mine within about four or five days so it's really quick shipping I can't say enough about how well this company operates to get you the styled canvas that you ordered so you can display it beautifully in your own home decor. I will have the link in my description box to their website so you can go take a look around because I know you guys want to go take a look. I mean, I ordered two for crying out loud. It took me days. I had like 10 canvases in my cart trying to figure out like, how am I going to get just one? And in the end, of course, as you know, the story, I got two. I couldn't decide. So again, that link will be in my description box to the website. And I'm also going to have a discount code for you for 15% off your entire order. With that said, let's move on to project number two. For this project, I have these great big long craft wood boards from Dollar Tree. Um, I'm going to need three of them for this project. And then I'm going to use this for a base. It's a thick piece of wood for my supply. You could use these thicker 12-inch chunky slat boards from Dollar Tree if you want. Just cut it in half. If you don't have anything like this, you could certainly bring in a couple of other pieces for your base, like this thick round circle from Dollar Tree, or like they have thick round squares kind of like this would work perfectly wonderful. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, on one board, I'm going to mark it about two and a quarter inches up here. Go all the way across and mark my line. Just like that. And then I'm going to take some wood glue here on that board that I just marked. Only from the top down to the line, I'm going to add some wood glue on both sides here. I don't want to go past the line. And then once I get glue on both sides, I'm going to go ahead and center this on the other two boards. You're going to see they're longer. I don't want those two boards to go longer than where I drew that line at. And then I'm going to go ahead and clamp them. Okay, so they get nice and tight there. Perfect. And then what I'm going to do, once that's ready to go, I'm taking that middle board and I found the center and drew a little dot there. And then I'm going from the center of that dot down to the edge of that first board to kind of make a tree shape here. One side, and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, the center of that dot down to the edge of the other board. Just like that. Now for this project, I'm gonna be using my jigsaw off camera and cut out my tree shape. If you don't have the use of a jigsaw, what you could do for this project in terms of supplies is get those like long signs they have out. Uh, you know, those plain wood long signs that have the little die cut of a pumpkin or something like that, or just some regular, nice, large, uh, already made home decor sign from Dollar Tree, because those are just like paper, fibrous paper, and you would be able to cut your tree shape out with a ruler and a craft knife. So that would work perfectly wonderful. So now moving ahead, what I've got here is I've just traced the shape of my tree, and then I have redrawn a pattern line about a quarter of an inch in here, and I'm cutting that out so just like on the first project you know where I cut the paper about an eighth of an inch shy all the way around to see the wood perimeter that's what we're doing here so again I traced the tree and then I redrew the pattern about a quarter of an inch in and we're going to cut that out I'm going to set that aside and right now I'm going to use a Jenga block you can see the larger one on the left and the smaller one is the one from Dollar Tree. Either one will work fine. I'm going to use a little wood glue here. Our base is a little bit skinny. So I'm going to add this Jenga block here to the back to make our base just a little bit more stout and secure. And then once that sets up, I'm going to add some wood glue on the bottom. 
And then this is where you're going to attach it and glue it to whatever base that you have chosen for your project to make your tree stand up. We're gonna let that sit aside for a minute. Now, once it's dry, I'm gonna use Dixie Belt chalk paint in the color Drop Cloth, and I'm gonna go ahead and paint my entire tree. I do a couple of coats here, front and back, of course, but you can see how nice with that Jenga block, um, it is nice and stout looking to hold up our tree. I found a big box of these at a garage sale there's it said jenga on it there's really like nothing on it it was like another off version of the jenga game and charging me a dollar and i got some really nice big pieces of wood but again the little you know tumbling tower blocks from dollar tree would work just wonderful continuing on here just showing that little bit of painting I almost wasn't going to cover this up because I kind of wanted to be able to stress and sand to allow those slat boards to show a little bit. But in the end, I did, of course, cover it up. Now I'm using that pattern that we cut out earlier and I'm cutting it out of some of this duck cloth. It's by Waverly Brand. You can get it at Walmart. It's just a really thick, almost muslin type fabric. And I'm going to apologize because honestly, I don't know where the footage went. You're also going to need some batting or some felt or something like that to cut out. So you can see here on the right side, I've got two pieces of batting here I got at Walmart. And I'm going to go ahead and glue those together. And when you cut your batting or your felt out, cut it a little bit smaller all the way around than your fabric. And I'll show you here what it looks like. Glue those two pieces together because I wanted it thicker. You could use one layer, but I wanted mine a little thicker. So I cut two and we're going to glue that onto our fabric here. And you can see it's probably again about a quarter inch shorter all the way around. So I apologize because I did film cutting that batting fabric out. But so here is my tree. I've kind of distressed around the edges a little bit and now I'm placing my batting slash fabric on top. Now what I want to do essentially is I want to glue it on there and press the fabric against the sides of that batting so that it gives us a little puffy look. Okay, now if you don't want to add fabric and batting, you don't have to. You can leave it just perfectly painted. You can um, use just paper to cover the front, whatever you would like. And I'm going to add some sewing on here. Again, this is optional. I'm just sewing right along the edges of that batting around on that fabric where, you know, there were batting was not touching the fabric. We had that little spacing around that batting, remember? So that's where I am sewing here. It's just to give it illusion to make it look a little bit quilted, even though it's not quilted. So here's what it looks like. Again, you don't have to add this part if you're not a sewer, because what we're gonna do here, we'll make it look quilted in just a minute. So what you're seeing here is I'm adding glue in the center of the batting, and then I'm adding glue around the edges of the batting on that main fabric area, okay? Beacon Fabri-Tac glue works wonderful for this. So you place it on where you want, and then you're going to press it your fingers right along the edge. You can see I'm pushing along the edge of that fabric right up against that batting, and that's gonna give us the quilted look. So see, you don't really have to have the sewing there. I just like to add that little bit of a touch. See I'm pressing right up against that batting? Gives us a nice puffy, puffy look. Okay, let that set a bit, and then you can see what it looks like here. See how it gives us a nice little quarter inch height there with that batting, and that is again why I use two pieces of batting. So once that's on there, I'm gonna use some twine here, and I'm just going probably about oh three or four inches up here, and I'm gonna wrap the twine around our tree here and around that fabric, and I think I do about 10 wraps here with the twine. This is a little bit thicker twine again that I get at Walmart. I buy this little bit thicker twine and then even a little bit thicker still, as you saw on the first project we used on the tag. It looks nice here, but you know, of course, Dollar Tree twine will work fine. You just might have to wrap a little bit more if you wanted it to be as wide as, you know, 10 wraps around type thing, which is probably about an inch, inch and a half or so width of twine here. Get it where I need it and cut off the excess and then I'll just glue that into place. I think this turned out really cute. In the final looks, you'll also see I'm going to put a couple of trees there like I did with the tags, just so you can see some different design options that I made. Now I've just got some greenery here for my supply. I'm going to kind of center it in the middle of our little twine decoration there. 
And then I've got a ripped piece of fabric here. I get this fabric at Walmart, tied it into a bow, and I'm just placing the center of that. And then finally, thank you, Jen, who is Mother Time here on YouTube. You all know I just love her, love her crafts. She's been telling us about these clickable stamps forever. You can get at Michael's, and I finally got myself a set. I'm going to use this Instant Dry Pigment Ink Versafine. I've used it for years. It dries really quickly. Stamp on Be Merry. You could leave it just like that, but y'all know me by the miracle of editing. I already have one here off camera where I've sewed around the edges so it kind of goes in with the sewing of my tree. We're going to set that aside and come back to it. I want to add a little bit of decoration at the bottom here, and I'm just adding a little bit more greenery for my supply. A couple of beaded pit berries that I love. I get at Hobby Lobby. Adding that in as well, and I'm going to add a little bit of moss around here and around the backside as well. You don't see me do the back, but the backside has some moss too to make it all look kind of, you know, uniform and um, complete on the backside. Perfect. And then I'm going to use a little pine cone here. You can get these, you know, bags at Dollar Tree. And I've got Rusty Bell and a Rusty Star I'm going to use here as well. I'll have the links in the description box. I get those from Factory Direct Crafts tuck that star in between the pine cone and bell and then I'm going to add a little more twine bow here a little more I love this twine ribbon they came out with it summertime at Dollar Tree and I bought like four bundles of those things glue that on and then I'm going to glue on my little tag here and then of course as Jen does thank you again Jen for this little thing I'm going to add a little button here right in the center and that makes this project complete Now, let's take a look and see who's joining me for some Christmas DIY inspiration. For this week, I'm joining in again with my sweet friends, Sandra, who is DIYs at the Schwoven's Nest, Emily, who is Farm Charm Cheek, and Lisa Marie, who's Crafting My Best Life with Lisa Marie. We have tons of Christmas crafts you're going to be sure to love. I'll have the link in the description box to their videos and channel and i'll also have a link if you want to just go directly to the playlist make sure you check out these videos they are going to be awesome let's move on to project number three for this project, I'm going to have a hand-drawn free printable for you. I'll have the link in the description box to my blog. On page one here, this is the head to our pattern. You'll cut two out of the fabric on that. This just shows the top and the bottom. And in kind of the area you'll leave open for stuffing, of course, we'll go through that in our video. And then on page two, their instructions are at the top. You know, I explained that throughout the video, but I wrote them on here anyway. You're going to have the pattern for the hat. This is the hat brim. You're going to cut two of that, and you're going to want to make sure you cut out that center piece here. And then the main hat here, again, you're going to cut two, and you've got the top and the bottom of the hat. And then you're going to allow about a quarter inch seam allowance for gluing or sewing so for our fabric on the hat I chose black felt and then for the head I'm just using this batting both of them I get from Walmart and we'll just show a little bit of the cutting process here on the hat I'm cutting out the brim here around the outside and the center circle of course don't need that in there take the pins off again two pieces of felt for this and then I've got the main portion of the hat already cut out in two pieces and then as we go to the head I'm cutting out that portion in this batting this comes on like a roll at Walmart you know a, a bolt or whatever you can cut it off you get a lot of batting for your money it's worth it two pieces here now let's go with the gluing option part one for those of you who are gluers you can use beacon fabri-tac glue or hot glue gun we'll kind of go back and forth here on the main portion of the hat you're going to glue along the long side the top 
and the other long side, leaving that short end open, okay? On the brim of the hat, you're only going to glue around that outer edge for now, okay? And then on your head, you're going to glue all the way around, leaving the top portion on that curved surface, not the straight edge, that curved surface about three or four inches open, all right? Let's take a look at those of us that are sewers on the sewing option. We're going to just come in here and we're going to sew the outer edge of the brim of our hat leaving the inner edge open, of course. Okay, and here's what that looks like, all sewn up. Now, all of us gluers or sewers, go ahead and everybody turn your hat brim right side out. Hopefully this isn't getting confusing going back and forth, but I tried to, you know, trying to keep it straight for you all. Get that all ready to go. Now, I didn't kind of clip around the outer edge. You can make little slits so that your hat looks a little more circle-ish, but I didn't worry about that. <laughs> I just left it. Um, those of you sewing know what I'm talking about. Anyway, then we're going to go ahead and sew our main hat piece here, just leaving that shorter straight edge open, of course. You can see what that looks like. And then, again, everybody go ahead and turn your main hat piece right side out. We're all on the same page for just a moment. I'm using like the end of my paintbrush here to kind of get in those little points there, just to made it easier to get those points out really well and make them stand out a little bit better. Now, whether you're gluing or slowing, slowing, <laughs> whether you're gluing or sewing, you're going to cut slits at the bottom of your hat, about a half inch long. That opening there, cut some slits, okay? This is what it looks like. Because in the end, we're going to put our hat through the center of that brim. And I know it looks a little bit big for now, but don't worry, we're going to adjust that a little bit later. It's done intentionally, okay? Now, those of us that are sewing, we wanna go ahead and sew our head here. Again, we're sewing all the way around, leaving that little three to four inch top opening open, right? This is what that looks like, okay? Now, those of you that are gluers, this is your gluing option part two. We're going to move on to the head here. So I want you to turn your head right side out. We're going to be doing the same thing we did in our last video when we made the Santa. If you missed that, I'll have the link down below. Turn your head right side out. And I want you to go to the points, the straight edge to where the points are. And I want you to tuck those in and make like a little recess there. Okay, you're working along the straight edge of the bottom, a little recess. Okay, turn it over on this side, that straight edge. Poke in that little corner. So you have again a little recess. You're going to use your glue here and you're going to add glue into that little recess, okay? And you're gonna pinch it together, match your seams, pinch it together, all right? Then we're gonna flip it over, we're gonna do the same thing on this side, we've got that little recess, you're gonna add your glue, match your seams, pinch it together, okay? I, of course, am not gluing, so I'm just gonna, you know, pardon me for a moment, just put a couple of pins in here to simulate like I've glued it so I can show you the rest of what you need to do here. Once you've glued that, then you're gonna turn your bag wrong side out again and now you've got your little points here because you've glued that corner in together you're going to add glue on that little point and on that little point and you're going to take it and you're going to fold it in matching your seams just like that that's what it's going to look like okay now back to our sewers let's work on our head this is your part two our uh, head is wrong side out and we're going to pin down those corners about an inch down, okay? Pull the fabric out and kind of make a little triangle and pin it about an inch down. And then take it to your sewing machine and sew those little corners. Again, about an inch, inch down. I didn't even get it fully a down inch on one side. This side looks good, right? <laughs> Wait till you see the other side. I got a little crooked, it doesn't matter. I left it in to show you because it really doesn't affect anything. Look at, I didn't sew this and do a very good triangle. <laughs> so anyway, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna glue right up above where you sewed and you're going to press those down just like the gluers did. We're using glue, right? Press it down and hold it, let it set up. All right, both gluing and sewing, we're all back together again. So this is what we should look like. Now everybody turn your head back to the right side out okay perfect we're all together yay got our little opening there this is what our beautiful bottom looks like no laughing at my words i'm going to use some rocks here i just have some rocks left from dollar tree you can get rocks out of your backyard whatever just a little uh you know about a quarter of the bag i put it into a sandwich bag and i'm taking some stuffing now a little bit of stuffing on the bottom 
And then I'm putting the rocks on top of that stuffing. And then I'm going to come around and stuff around those rocks. For me, because I'm selling this at a craft show, I don't want my rocks just right on the bottom of that fabric because you'll feel all that lumpy bumpy. So I'm putting, you know, some stuffing down first and then the rocks down to kind of help cushion it and make it nice and soft so just continue stuffing your body as stuff full as you want it and then if you're a gluer go ahead and glue that opening closed and if you're a sewer you can glue it closed as well i'm going to just take mine with like a needle and thread and i'm going to go ahead and stitch it closed but gluing will work perfectly wonderful whether you're a gluer or whether you're a sewer whatever you have time for basically so just do a little bit of sewing here finish it up and we're going to just set this aside for a minute and go to our hat now here's our hat remember we've cut our little slits we put this in and remember i said earlier our hat's going to be a little bit big so we're going to make adjustments on our brim there our hat brim is going to be a little bit big first thing we're going to do is we want to close that inner circle go ahead and glue that closed and then we're going to glue right under where we made those slits on our hat, just a small portion at a time. And what we're going to do is bring it through and then the inner edge of your hat here, see that inner edge where we glued it? You're going to glue that down onto your glue right below those slits. And I like to pin mine as I go along. So hopefully this is understandable, just taking a little at a time, gluing the edge of that brim right below the slits on your hat where you added some glue. So here's where we're going to take up some space. We're going to pinch it together right here on our brim and make a little pleat, okay? This gives it personality. I just love doing it this way. It gives the hat some character and it makes it sit really like fun on top of the head. So that's why the inner circle is a little bit bigger, okay? Add some pleats along the way. I think I only added about three pleats along is about all you need. Again, I like to pin it along the way. Easy to take the pins out. You can see what it's starting to look like with the cute little pleat in there. I know with the, the black felt, it's a little hard, but you get it. Then go ahead, add a little bit more glue on, I just, like I said, a little bit at a time, add a little bit more glue on your hat and be, you know, continue uh, pinning around the brim around that hat piece, you know, pinching and adding pleats as you need to, and then pinning it because it really does help in keeping it together. Okay, and here I think I did like a double pleat kind of right next to the other pleat because it just makes it cute, I promise. So once it's all done and everything is set up, I let it set up a good five minutes or so. Um, take the pins out, of course, and then we're going to glue those little slits down onto your brim. All right? See here, I'm just gluing the little slits down. Again, I like to pin it until it's set and then I can pull the pins out. I've never had my pins stick in that glue or anything. Um, works perfectly wonderful. Pinning it all the way around and let it set up for a couple of minutes. And once that's done, turn it over. Now, I know you see this glue and stuff here. That just happens when we're gluing. Do not worry. You know we're going to cover it up. All right, so next thing we're going to do, our hat's all set. It looks cute. Look how the brim just lays when I set the hat down. I want you to stuff your hat, okay, and stuff it as full as you want. You can see what it's going to look like with the pleats, how it made the brim stand up a little bit and stuff. That's the personality we want. Once you have your hat stuffed as full as you want it, we're going to go ahead and glue it down. I glue about an inch out from the main circle and then a lot of glue on that inner circle where all that stuffing is. And then I figure out where I want it to lay on our head and then I pin it down again and let that set up because it's really thick and a lot of glue there. So I let it set up a couple minutes. Now I'm going to take this Distress Oxide ink. It's vintage photo. You can find it in any scrapbook section of the main stores. And then I've got a little finger sponge uh, that I use. You can use a makeup sponge or whatever. And I'm just going to use it as like shading around all the edges, around the hat, around the head, you know, the bottom. And we'll once we get like the nose and eyes on, we'll do a little more shading. That way it just gives a little depth to our snowman here as you can tell we're making right just going all the way around a little bit on the sides a little bit more through the center on the back it's ready to go as much or as little as you want now i've got about an inch and a half of ripped homespun fabric here i get this at hobby lobby i'm just going to cut a chunk off kind of pull on those edges so it matches nicely and we're going to begin to cover all that glue stuff on our hat and make our hat look cute i'm just going to tie it around the bottom of the hat and then just make a simple knot in the bottom here 
I'm going to use some of this twisted rusty wire. I'll have the link to the rusty wire bells and star I use in this project. Got them from factorydirect.com and I'll have the links to those product in my description box. Wrapping it around a paintbrush and then folding it in half and then just gluing it along with some greenery right behind that knot in that fabric couple pieces of greenery here just from my stash and I've got a couple pip berries I'm gonna hide one under the first tail of our fabric and one under the back tail of our fabric there and see where that little bit of glue is I'm just gonna kind of wrinkle up and glue my fabric in that spot right I'm gonna add a little uh, pine cone here you can get those from Dollar Tree and my favorite beaded pit berries I get on you know big pit berry stems from Hobby Lobby in their Christmas section I'm gonna add a couple here and then I believe I add one off on the back off camera hiding all that glue you're not seeing it are you a little bit of greenery down below that knot and then this is just a tag that I've sewed around we did it in our other project on our tree using our clickable stamps from uh, Michaels. Again, I'll have the link to that in the description box down below. I'm using my VersaFine ink. Again, you can find this in the scrapbooking section at your major craft stores, or you can look for it online. And I'm just spelling out my believe word. Not enough E's and stuff, so I have to kind of do it in two halves here to form my word. Putting my rusty bell on, and then my little tag, I'm gonna place right under that rusty bell. And then I'm gonna ink that tag up a little bit because I forgot to do it ahead of time. And then I've got a little twine bow here. I'm going to kind of tuck that behind the bell and a little bit more greenery around that tag. I'm going to kind of wrinkle up my tag and spot glue it down. And I'm going to spot glue down the little tails of our fabric piece here. See, look, we hit all that glue up. Nobody knows a thing. And now I'm going to take this rusty star and I'm going to glue it right up on the hat above all that cute decoration. Now for the nose and eyes, there's some options. I like this Crayola Model Magic Air Dry Clay because when it dries, it literally does not even have the weight of a marshmallow. And I made like a sideways nose and a frontways nose. And then of course I decided to do something different with the nose, but I wanted to show you. And I made a couple of eyes and I just kind of squished them together. I want my eyes squished together. I will use those. I decided to make a fabric nose. So I'm gonna use some orange fabric and some of that batting. I just hand drew a little kind of wrinkly crinkly nose and I cut two pieces out of the orange fabric and a little piece of batting to fit right inside. Now if you're a gluer of course you can just glue this whole thing together. I just thought the fabric nose kind of fit in better with the rest of the fabric detailing we have going on but it took me a while to decide because I really kind of like the clay noses too. So once I glue that all together I'm going to take it to the sewing machine to go in with the look of the rest of my sewing. Again you can glue it together looks perfectly cute. We'll get this out of the machine here and show you what it looks like. See, that looks cute. But again, glue will look cute too. And then I'm going to just kind of take and distress the edges. So if you're a gluer, that'll really help it a lot. Just kind of distress those edges. Set that aside for a minute. I'm going to take this Distress Oxide ink in worn lipstick and use my little dauber and make some cute little pink cheeks. You could use some actual like blush for makeup or something if you want. And then I'm going to ink up my nose just a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue it on kind of between the cheeks. And no, I'm not going to put a mouth on this. If you want a mouth, you can do a mouth. And I'm going to spot glue my other little tail of my fabric bow uh, on both sides and get those in place looking cute. And then I've painted my little eyes here, my little clay eyes. I'm going to go ahead and glue both of those on. Looks so cute. You can make some little balls out of this clay and to make yourself a mouth like six little round balls and make a mouth would look perfectly cute and now i'm coming back in with that same ink we used earlier and just adding a little shadowing around the eyes and the nose here and then off camera i'm going to use some of this spray glitter i get it at walmart it's clear with silver glitter i get it in the craft section not the spray paint section and then on camera here i'm using some 3m spray adhesive and i just happen to have some pumpkin pie spice next to me you could use cinnamon and just kind of you know sprinkling it on certain areas of the hat just to give it a little something and make it smell good and once i do that this project is complete So as usual, I really hope you enjoyed all the projects that I came up with today. Leave me a comment down below and let me know which one was your favorite, which one you want to make right now. Do you love them all equally? Bring it on. You know I love to read your comments. <laughs> 
please give this video a thumbs up. And if you just walked in, you're checking things out, or maybe you came over from one of my other Sweet Friends channels, welcome, welcome to my channel. If you really are digging what you saw today, make sure before you click off, you hit that red subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on another video from me. Please make sure, my friends, that you check out the links in my description box or the playlist or go to the individual videos to Sandra with DIY at the Schwoven's Nest, Emily at Farm Charm Cheek, and Lisa Marie with Crafting My Best Life with Lisa Marie. You don't want to miss out on a single project from them. Thank you, ladies, for joining in with me again today. Thank you also again to Tailored Canvases for sponsoring this video. And before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. We hear the word of God and experience his love and grace through his knowledge and power. He is both omnipresent and omniscient. He will reign forever and ever. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He has a heart of love. He has a heart of acceptance. He has a heart of forgiveness. He freely loves and freely gives. God notices you. He accepts you as you are, no matter how you may feel about yourself or what you have done. He hears you. He hears the cry of your heart and he understands how you feel. He loves you. He offers his heart and asks for yours. He asks for a partnership, a lifelong connection. He looks for ways or gives you opportunities to bring you ever closer to him. He gives you free will and hopes that you will choose him and all that he has for you. He opens doors, lights your path, and gives you guidance to walk toward him. But you have to let your heart be open and your mind ready to receive all that he offers you. He will take care of you, love you, and never leave you. Choosing God isn't a one-time thing for fire insurance. It's a lifelong relationship of love with him. It's trusting him in all you do. It's following the plans he has for you. It's listening to his timing of his leading. It's understanding that he's laid out his plans for you to give you a life involving all the things of victory and running the race to win to get to the finish line and hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. Allow God to be your living reality. Allow him to fill you with his righteousness, his spirit, his fruit. Allow yourself the time to grow rich in his mercy and grace. Allow his peace and healing to fill your soul. Shake off your heavy chains and see the Lord for who he is. Renew your spirit in him this day and allow him to love you. He has shown us his love by dying for us. Remain in that love. Choose him. Surrender to him. He is waiting for your heart. I thank you for sharing your time with me, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.